My name is Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Cole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour channel. And we are excited to be here with y'all. It is a Shabbat, one of the best days, if not the best day of the week. And our our homes are open to you guys. Our love is open to you guys. We thank you guys very, very much for being with us today. And um, let us get going with where we begin. Mr. Cole, <clears throat> who do we have in the chat room? Let's see. We have the Grand. We have Brother Glenn, we have Cindy LJ, Joanna, Tess, Carla. Wait, what about Ollie? Where's Ollie? Ollie's with Cindy. All, Ollie's in there? <laughs> Hi, Ollie. Hi, guys. How you doing? Dreg's in there. Zachary Z. Zachary Z. Rihanna. And all Brother Glenn. Babies. All right. Well, much love to everybody out there. Thank Judith. you, guys. Judith, much love. Um, yeah, just huge loves. Thank you guys very, very much for being here with us on this day, and we are going to do what we always do on this, and um, I guess let's begin with a quick word of prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for another day that we can be a group, that we can hang out with the, with people of our like mind, and Father, we thank you for your Torah. We thank you for your son. We thank you for the way forward. Father, we ask that the eyes are open and the ears are able to hear the message that you have for us today. Father, help us to be able to receive whatever you will bring down to us. I ask that the Ruha HaKadosh will embolden us all and be with us and walk with us. And Father, we thank you for your son. We thank you for his sacrifice. We thank you for his kingmanship that he is going to be our king. And Father, I cannot wait and we cannot wait for our king to arrive. Whenever that is ready, Father, we are ready to receive him. We thank you for everything. We ask this all in the name of Yahushua. Amen. Okay, so... 
let us begin right here, and I guess we'll read. Let's begin with our um, a uh, Shema, and this is the Shema. And for those who do not know what the Shema is, the Shema is what, Jaden? It is the kind of a creed for Yahweh's people. Yeah, it is a. Um, it's a. It's kind of like yeah. It's almost like a. Um, an understanding. This is where a lot of this can begin, and a lot of people don't realize that you guys are Yisrael. You guys are Israel. There is no, there is no religions in this world that mean anything when it comes to scriptures. Scriptures are the religion killer, and when you have any kind of religion at all, you always have creeds and you have ways that they go forward that are abnormal to what scriptures are and so you don't want to hook your flag to a religion you want to hook your flag to a family that we are going to be and the family is is all Yisrael and the way that we become this family is by keeping the laws statutes and the commandments of our creator and we have the faith of Messiah Yahushua so it's a two-way road that we have to go it's not a set and forget it's not a once saved always saved it is it is a process it is a lifestyle it is a way forward <clears throat> Now here's the Shema, and this is this is very important, and we like to start with this because it, it is important. Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu. Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart, and you shall teach them diligently unto your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall bind them for a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. And you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. Okay, gentlemen, um, what do you guys make of this? Um, I make of that is wants us to surround ourselves in the Torah. It wants us to make it all around us. So everywhere we look, everywhere we are doing something, we see the Torah. Yeah, and it's all it's a it's a, about a Torah lifestyle, right? We are the people that are supposed to be peculiar. The people of our creator are called peculiar. We're called peculiar for a certain reason because we don't look like the world. We're not supposed to smell like the world or taste like the world or anything of it. We're supposed to be separated from this world. And that means living our life in a completely different way. It means doing things in a completely different way. It means being set apart. And how we get set apart is by these laws, statutes, and commandments, which we are just about to read. These are the laws, statutes, and commandments that people have tossed in the, in the ditch, they put in the trash can, they don't believe it applies to them at all, and they do absolutely apply to us every day, every moment, and they will enhance us, and they will also, um, they will curse us if we do not keep them and we do not follow our creator. So the absolute best path and the, the path of righteousness and the holiness and the cleanliness is with our creator. Everything else is demonic, it's satanic, and it's anything that is contrary is opposite of it. And that's not the way we want to go. And the first thing before, <clears throat> a lot of you guys, we get a lot of views on this particular video during the week and, and following this in our little tiny class here, our family is right here. The, everybody here is, is the family that we uh, love and we keep and everybody else we love and, and we keep as well. But for the immediate family, I wanted to kind of throw this over to you guys. What you're looking at is you are looking at um, something I'm, I guess I'm proud of and I, I guess pride comes before a fall, but this is something that you can be proud in. And what you're looking at over here is you're looking at the fruits of uh, several people's labor. And one of the people is Chris from the Bobby Zines um, YouTube channel has had a hand in this. And then if you guys take a look right here, this is our list right here. And everything right here on this list is is has been comp not not fully proofread. But this is our we're heading towards the 66 books. And this is what you're looking at right here is you're looking at completely rewritten from the from the top to the bottom. Everything you see here are not there's no copies to this. It, it is a we copied every dot, every tittle, every last thing, and we're proofreading it and we're putting it together. And we're up about 10 books from where we were last week. And we have completely turned our house upside down because we stopped doing a lot of our farming, the stuff that we're doing outside. And we're taking a break from this for a, a little temporary break so that we are able to bring this book to life. And so everyone in our house has now a task and, and a good three quarters of the day for a lot of people in this house is going through scriptures. And Jade, how, how do you how do you feel? You've been through all the prophets last week. What are your thoughts after literally not rewriting the Bible, but copying it and scribing it over? What are your thoughts? 
Um, it can be done. It shouldn't take too long. Well, you, you've been reading the Bible unlike anyone else that's been reading the Bible as of late because you not only do you take a sentence, you paste a sentence in there, then you read the sentence again, then you look through it, then you put all the, the punctuation and everything back in. What do you think of the, uh, the, the prophets in Israel? You've um, been through 12 prophets. Have, has Israel repented yet? No, they never repent. Never repented? They end up getting exiled. They exile all the way, right? And so you've made it through. What books have you made it through already? Um, you Jonah, Micah? So, uh, I think every, I, all the prophets except Hosea... Well, uh, you just read, what'd you just type yesterday? What'd uh, you do? Yesterday I did Joel, Obadiah, uh, Amos. Oh, there's another one I did. It was a quick one. Yeah, we have Haggai and Jonah. Did you get Jonah in there? Jo yeah. yeah, Jonah I did. I did Haggai, Malachi. This is a flat over the last four or five days. Yeah, and so you're almost done with the prophets on that. And so as you guys see it, as we get to this next week, you should see double this list right here, Yah willing, obviously. Um, but as we get through this, we're trying to do a three-month special that once if this three months is over, this will be 100% ready to release to anybody and everybody. And um, it's, it's going to be amazing. And as we bring this to life, we bring it to our website. And on the website, you can, it's, um, it just, it's, it's really super cool having the restored name Hebrew scriptures on the website. And you are able to see it. It has the name of Yah back in there. And um, this is where we're going. And it will be completely free. There will never, ever be a charge to any of this stuff. And when we are done with this, we will release it in a lot of different formats. And that's the excitement for today. And, um, I guess let us begin with what we do every single week is we are going to go through the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator. Uh, everyone ready? Yep. yep. Mr. Colby, anything going on in no. the chat room? Okay. All right. So everyone, let us begin. The very first law, and, and if anyone in the chat room has like wants to throw a, a hand up or shoot us a question, or if you guys, if any of these laws don't make sense to you, let us know. Uh, we want these to make sense to everybody because they are very simple. They are things that we can all do in our life and um, those who those who don't want to keep the law of statutes and commands the first thing you would always want to ask them is, is which law do we start with do, do we just ixnay do we do you cancel out being fruitful should we not be fruitful is, is that the law we want to get rid of or, or should we stop multiplying and so our seed dies off in this world and we, 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 we don't we die off right every commandment in here is something that is profitable to our lives and profitable to our souls and so let's begin and Chris is here, by the way. Oh, hey, Chris, from the Bobby Zines YouTube channel. Thank you, brother. I was just, I don't know if you caught the little last bit. He did. Okay. He said hi, uh, all right, good. I hope he's, he caught that. And um, let us begin, guys. Very first commandment, which is a very good commandment that we end up in Genesis, is be fruitful. Commandment number two, multiply. Replenish the earth. So do it. Have you made it with a fish? Have fowl and every living creature. Okay, spit it out there, son. The herb bearing in every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. Go okay, who is covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. Over 53 times, my friends, is what we're told to guard these commandments. This is not a joke. He didn't put this in over 53 times just so that we can make light of it, toss it on the cross, put it in the ditch, and live how we want to live and think that we're going to wait for the rapture that's going to come get us disobedient children. Every right? male shall be circumcised eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Matzah. There is one Torah for the stranger and the Ebrim. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven image. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to not. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yeah, who is laws for criminals? Do not lie with a beast. No, go no sacrifices to other gods. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow the multitude of evil. Do not judge righteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feasts of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. 
You don't make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make you use no heal oil on an old person. Do not make you use this perfume on an old person. Okay, do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbors. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time is separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement in Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for a wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children in Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not read the corners of the, your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not do false or fraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not divert your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not t do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not do cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not, do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast of first fruits. Shavuot, the Omer count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Teruah. Keep the feast of Skot, Shemini Atzeret. If you blaspheme in the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of being a Nazir. Wear Zizi on the four corners of your garments. The laws of whoever touched the corpse. Follow the laws of Yahuwah's inheritance. Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do not add or take away to the, from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the fronts between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorpost. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave to Yahuwah. Serve by his name. Destroy graven images. Do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim. Rejoice in all Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger of clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithes your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven-year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judging officers in all your gates. Do not plant Asherah poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. Prophet tested Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is to get double portions. If, you are, if your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that is able to be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. Law of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheep in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless and widow. Do not lose your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child and shall take his wife, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah, the Feast of Sukkot. Okay. All right. So, um, let's see. What is going on? Do you have something going on in the chat room, Ms. Nicole? Um, no, Cindy just asked me. She's like, so much is confusing and false, so I want to ask you, how do we know that we have a jubilee coming up this year? We don't. Yeah. You'd have we to... don't know that. And there's so much misleading information and so much information that people are so, like, convoluted and nothing yeah there, there's there's absolutely no way to absolutely know if you are in a jubilee year or not there's a lot of problems because we are unable to get the exact day of creation and nicole has been spending i don't know she spent a tremendous amount of time on it to the point where i don't know if she's still going at it um but she's been she went through jubilees and she went through jasher and she's she's basically putting dates and times and trying to get a date of creation trying to get us in cycles of sevens and fifties but we are unable to figure out exactly. And so 
you know, that's a lot of the reason we don't do, we're not doing a lot of the calendar stuff like we used to do anymore. There's literally like four calendars people use, and there's actually more than that. Um, but you have the four calendars that people are on, it could be any one of the four. And, you know, I, I think we're, we're on one certain one, but as far as saying, okay, well, we're for sure on this calendar, I'm not going to do it anymore because I, I honestly don't know. And so we are at some point maybe going to get the four calendars together so everybody has an idea, but every single calendar there's something different with it and everybody believes something completely different and there is not a consensus or anything um at all i mean you will find these people that are like i'm dead set on this calendar and this is why and you know that everybody else is completely wrong i don't know so much as we will ever know this until we have our messiah that comes and lays this all out you know we're six thousand years to where towards the end of this stuff you know we've been in this for two thousand years since the messiah has gone um thousands of years prior to this uh, we're we're in the age of deception, and so you know they, they everything we we know is, is completely you know messed up. So that's it as far as that goes. Anything else? Carla says, for those of us new to celebrating Yah's feast days, can you share with us how to celebrate to honor Yah? Um, dep depends on what day. I mean, it, what day are we talking about? I would say start with Passover. Passover. So what do we do for Passover? Yeah. So Passover's coming up, and so how do we run Passover? Well, we usually find a piece of lamb because, you know, you don't have a lamb, you can't sacrifice lamb. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is right out of the gate, because we, we can't, like, go get a lamb and kill it ourselves, we end up with a lamb with broken bones. And that's part of the, the commandment is you're not supposed to break the bones on this thing. So before we even begin attempting to do this, we're already breaking the ceremonial commands on this, but we're trying to do that. And so um, let, let's continue on. What do we do for Passover? So we get our lamb. Yep. And I roast it with fire. Yep, we, we take it outside. We roast it outside with fire, with herbs. And, and we, we do it between the evenings. We actually do it on, it'll be April 4th, I believe, on the evening. It's the 13th evening to the 14th day. Because it says between evening and evening, which is twilight. So if you actually do it on the 14th night, when you're going to the 15th, you're actually combining the two feasts together. So we do it the night before. The beginning of day 14 versus the ending of day 14. Yeah, and, and how it begins is, is we all dress up, <laughs> not really dress up, but I mean, we have our little staff, we have our uh, belt, sandals, uh, sandals and we, we do it just like it says. We eat it in haste, and um, we, we do it just like that. But And then as far as the rest of the day, any of these, these days, we don't do any kind of like what we do, servile work. We spend it with, with, with our family. We spend it here. Um, most of those, unless it's like a, a, a hag, like a, a feast day, like Passover is kind of a, um, it's, it's an in remembrance thing. And so we, we basically take the entire day off and, um, we, we still have to do our cows and, and chickens and stuff, but, um, it is not a work day. We don't go picking rocks or anything out of the field. Passover is not a high Shabbat, but unleavened bread is. Right. So, yeah. And so, but we still, we, we don't do, it's kind of a, a time off that we do. Okay, um, yeah, and yes, yeah, Yeshua was the, the Passover lamb, I mean, and Richard B. says, but I mean, we're st we still have commandments that, you know, M Messiah became not only our, our Passover lamb, but he became our Melchizedek priest, our perfect priest and our perfect sacrifice, but we still have commandments that we need to observe this and um, to do this, and, and so that's what we do. And All right. with the roasted lamb, we also do unleavened bread as well, right. and bitter herbs. Um, and, and for that, come on, be, you want to get your unleavened bread out before unleavened bread day hits. Right, yes. oh, right. and we take, yeah. We, we take all leaven out of the house, baking soda, baking powder, yeast. I also take out my sourdough starter. Yeah, get we have, rid of it. We have an awesome sourdough starter that, we're, that she was almost in tears about yesterday because we got to get rid of it from last year. Um, she just started that thing up, and it lives for us and, and helps us with our bread and everything, so... That's what we kind of do there, and as we get closer to it, I, I think we'll discuss a little bit more. All right, gentlemen, are you guys ready for this? Yep. All right, so let us begin, and if anyone else has anything in there in the chat room, this is the this is the love of the chat room is that we can sit here and chit-chat with you guys, and we're happy to chit-chat with you guys. You guys are a family with us, and so um, truly you guys are about the only family we have outside of the people I see right here, and so here we are. And let us begin. We are in Ber Sheath. 29 and anyone remember anything about what's happened last time uh yeah you check bless Jacob told him not to take a wife from the um land of the, like, the canaanites told him to go to his um his mother's brother go marry it inside the family um esau went and took another wife from ishmael his uncle uh he went and jacob went and saw angels coming down out of heaven he made a rock and made it kind of like an altar thing where some like poured oil on it as a remembrance 
Right. Oh, and I want to toss on one more thing with Cindy, um, Cindy LJ on that. I saw earlier that you said right after Shabbat you were going to make some unleavened bread. They're not doing the same Shabbat. Oh, you're not doing the same Shabbat. Okay. All right. So it, it just I just want to inform everyone, you know, the Shabbat is where we don't do any cooking or cleaning or or anything of that sort. So if whatever day I guess you're celebrating Shabbat for us, it's, a, it's this is the seventh day. Um, you know, we prepare everything on Fridays, all the all the stuff we have today, so there's no cooking, cleaning, or any of that. We, we rise up, and it's basically muffins or, or stuff that we don't have to do. So, just wanted to um, throw that out there as well. The Grand says the Hebrews left Mitzriam on unleavened bread, yes, on a high Shabbat. Yes, yes. yes. that is correct. They didn't have so, time to wait for the bread to rise. Yeah. So, the day of Passover, they actually went and took all the, the gold and silver from the Mitzriam people to get yeah. ready. And then they left the next day right. on unleavened bread. Right. Hasatan was um, bound during that time, and they were able to uh, basically take him to school. Okay, here we go, guys. Verse 1. And so for anyone who doesn't know, at the bottom, this is the ex Halu scriptures. It's now Yahuwah's scriptures. Um, the top part is called the Targums, which is um, a very interesting um, translation of this. And we're still trying to get to the um, the the trying to get to is this good or is this bad. Okay. All right, so let's roll here and let's begin. And Jacob moved on and came to the land of the people of the east. And he looked and saw a well in the field and saw three flocks of sheep lying by it. For out of that well, they watered the flocks and a large stone was on the well's mouth. Okay, so this is where we got in the Targums last week where we had never, ever heard anything about this. And um, you, you guys remember the five things that it said that... Yeah, all these like special things. Yeah, like do you guys remember miracles, that? Yeah. yeah, do you remember it? What were they? Uh, one was rolling the stone away. The stone was rolled away. With one the, arm. The rocks yeah. became one. Right. The days were shortened. Right. The, le uh, the, the like, path that he went on was shortened before. Oh, right. He was, like, lifting his feet, and he was, like, able to go there. And let's see, the fifth one... Was it the messengers who saw in heaven? No, it was something else. I'm not sure, but what we're discussing for anyone that oh, doesn't understand... It was the but, well overflowed for 20 Oh, years. right, the well overflowed 21 years, or 20 years. 20. Right, so what we're discussing is last week in the Targums, it gave us things that we had never heard of. We we didn't know that the the rock of this well that we're about to read is, like, super, super heavy. And we didn't realize that um, it took, like, a whole herd of people to move the rock. And for some reason, um, Jakob was able to move this with one arm. Okay, so let's continue on. Uh, three? Uh, so we're out, all right? Yeah. Okay. And all the flocks would be gathered there. Then they would roll the stone from the well's mouth and water the sheep and put the stone back in its place on the well's mouth. So Jakob said to them, My brothers, where are you from? And they said, We are from Quran. And he said to them, Do you know Laban, son of Nacor? And they said, We know him. So he said to them, Is he well? And they said, Well, and see, his daughter Raquel is coming with her sheep, with the sheep. And he said, See, it is still high day, not the time for livestock to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go feed them. But they said, We are not allowed until all the flocks are gathered together and they have rolled the stone from the well's mouth. Then we shall water the sheep. All right, so this is something we, we did not know except for the Targums is that this was this was the, the situation, is that the rock was too big that you couldn't move it by yourself. You had to wait for all the guys to come. That's why they were waiting for everyone to do there. Okay. You I know, read tonight. Okay. Back to nine on the bottom. While he was still speaking with them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. Okay. Now, you guys remember in the Targums, did we read, was this previous or was this in the future where we found out why she was the shepherdess? We found it in, the in this chapter. Oh, it's in this chapter? Yep. Okay, so I won't break that one. Okay. And Jacob, we're up at the top, guys. And Jacob lifted up his feet lightly to proceed. And he came to the land of the children of the cast. And he looked and saw, and behold, there was a well in a field. And behold, there were there three flocks of sheep lying near it. Because from that well, they watered the flocks. And a great stone was laid upon the mouth of the well. And they gathered the flocks there and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep and set the stone on the mouth of the well in his place. And Jacob said to them, My brethren, whence are you? And they said, From Quran are we. And he said to them, Know you Laban bar Nacor? And they said, We know. And he said, Hath he peace? And they said, Peace. And behold, Rahel, this is Rahel, uh, his, that uh, doesn't sound right though, Rachel, <laughs> His daughter cometh in with the sheep. And he said, Behold, the time of the day is great. 
it is not time to gather home the cattle. Water the sheep and let them go again to pasture. And then the other version says it is not time to gather. And they said, we cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and we roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep. While they were speaking with him, Rachel came with her father's sheep. For she was a shepherdess at that time, because there had been a plague from Yahuwah among the sheep of Laban, and but few of them were left. And he had dismissed his shepherds and had put the remaining flock before Rachel, his daughter. Okay, so that gives us an answer that, you know, Laban um, was cursed prior to this, or Laban was having um, was really a bad dude for animal me. issues. Yeah, and I, and I wouldn't say having animal issues makes you a bad dude, but there's No, I mean, stuff he did earlier was bad. Right, right. Okay, so let's continue on. And so we are back down ten. here in ten. 10. Back at the bottom. And it came to be when Jacob saw Re Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, that Jacob went near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. Okay, do you think he just walked over there and kissed her? I mean, how would that, I mean, that, that should be kind of, like, odd, right? I feel like how they do here in Latin America. Like, it's, like, it's respectful, like, you hug and, like, you kiss on the cheek. Oh, you think it's like that? It's yeah, not, I, I don't think he's just hugging. Yeah, we, we didn't know about that until we came down to, um, see, we're from North America. And, like, hugging, shaking hands is one thing, but it's like you, uh, a lot of people aren't real huggy, and they don't. They don't, they don't really do that down here. Everyone they, hugs. You. Yeah, yeah. You get you get a hug and you get sometimes they they kiss you and stuff like that. And that that was a little odd for us. Um, and it's definitely uh, it, we're we're learning. This, the, but it's it's interesting to see the differences in um, cultures and how one culture is completely good with you know. And I, I think Russians are like that too. I think the Russians always give each other kisses. I think I remember that. I don't know. Let's continue on. You're not here for history. You're here for scriptures. <laughs> All right and. Um, 12. And when Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's relative and that he was Ribka's son, she ran and told her father. And it came to be when Laban heard the report about Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to his house. Then he told Laban all these matters. What do you got there, Mr. Cole? For Rhiannon says, I don't do hugs and kisses. I didn't either until we came here. Yeah, <laughs> e even then, Miss Nicole looks a little odd when somebody grabs a hold of her and, like, wants to hug her. I have a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Glenn says, living in the Middle East, you have to get used to being kissed by strangers. And Carla says, in Spain and Puerto Rico, we are huggy, kissy-type people. Yeah. And scriptures make more sense than knowing history. Yeah, it is. That, yeah, that is true. Okay. Um, then he told Laban all these matters. And Laban said to him, did I, did I catch that last one? Embraced him and kissed yeah. him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did, did I do 13? Yeah, 14 now. Okay. And Laban said to him, you are indeed my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with him for a month. Okay. Back to the Targums at the top. And it was when Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his, brother's, his mother's brother, that Jacob went nigh and rolled the stone with one of his arms from the mouth of the well. And the well, the well uprose and waters ascended to the top of it. And he watered the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother, and it uprose for 20 years. And it was at that point that Rachel goes, that's my man right there. You see that dude grab that rock and lift that off there? Ten men couldn't do that. That's my man. <laughs> I mean, that, that's, that's what I don't know. That's, that's just kind of what I'm thinking here, right? No, no guy could do it. Can you imagine that? If you were trying to impress your, your, your girl or a girl and you're able to, like, lift this off and it takes, like, a whole grip of people, and you know, the girl's like, yeah, all right. Let's, <laughs> here we go. Okay. He had an unfair advantage on everyone. He did, he did. He had a family line advantage, definitely. Okay. Um... Uh, where are we at, guys? 15? 15. Okay. Uh, you were up top. Was I up top? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay. After the 20 years. That's why you're not my navigator, Kate. Okay. okay. And Jacob. And Jacob kissed Rachel and lifted up his voice and wept. And Jacob told unto Rachel that he was come to be with her father to take one of his daughters. And Rachel answered him, Thou canst not dwell with him, for he is a man of cunning. And Jacob said to her, I am more cunning and wiser than he nor can he do me evil, because the word of Yahuwah is my helper. All right, this is something we'd never, ever heard about. And do you, do you believe this? Do you believe that the daughter of, do you believe the daughter is going to tell her new boyfriend or that possibly the new husband-to-be that don't dwell here, he's a man of cunning. He, she, she was trying to protect him. I can see that. Um, I can see this dude being like, he was like a terrible like person overall and like, 
knowing knowing who he is, I mean, I'm pretty sure you would like tell someone of your own family that this dude's not. Even yeah, I, I think I think the girl would tell the the boyfriend or husband to be for sure. And yeah, Laban was a bad dude. This dude was not a good dude at all. Like this this guy was very 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 super wicked. And so his daughters were looking out for her new man. Um, you know, at the expense of her uh, father. Okay, here we go. But, you know, it's also interesting that Jacob thought, you know, I, I, I can do this. I'm more cunning and wiser than he. And we will see. Yeah, we <laughs> will see. Okay. And when she knew that he was the son of Rivka, she ran and made it known to her father. And it was when Laban heard the account of the strength and piety of Jacob, the son of his sister, how he had taken the birthright and the order of blessing from the hand of his brother, and how Yahuwah had revealed himself to him at Bethel, how the stone had been removed and how the well had upflowed and risen to the brink. He ran to meet him and embrace him and kiss him and led him into his house. And he related to Laban all these things. So all of a sudden Laban's like, wow, score. This, is a this, scam. this guy's this is a rich. Better scammer than me. This guy, this guy, this guy's, look at this. The well started coming up, the water coming over the top of it. And, you know, for those who, I mean, I, most people understand what a well is. Um, I have yet to ever see a well overflow. I'm, I'm sure it, it does, especially probably when there's a ton of water. But for the most part, you're lowering a, a bucket or something 30, 40, 50 feet down. It could be even farther than that to get water. So, um, you know, him pulling it, assuming this happened um, and him hulking this rock off there with one arm and then the water start coming out. All of a sudden, Laban's like, wow, this dude is uh, blessed. We should probably hang out with this guy. Sounds like good, good guy to hang out with. Okay. Yeah. And Laban said to him, truly thou art my near one and my blood. And he dwelt with him a month of days. Even if he wasn't, he would still say that. Like, oh, truly your family. Stay yeah, here. yeah. Oh, yeah. You, uh, welcome home, son. Okay. And Laban said to Jacob. To oh, 15. I'm down to 15. All right. So we're going to the, the XHS. Then Laban said to Jacob, because you are my relative, should you therefore serve me for not? Let me know what your wages should be. Um. This is this is interesting, right? This is uh, and this is later on. I don't want to do a spoiler alert or too much of a spoiler alert, but um, that is this is an object of one of the girls' um, talks to Jacob later on is that my dad sold us, and this this basically he's selling us right here. Um, and so sixteen says, and Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. And Leah's eyes were weak. But Rachel was lovely of form and appearance. All right, so that's kind of uh, mean, I would say. I mean, because they're twins, right? So we have twins. We know Leah is the older. Um, Rachel is the, uh, or, uh, yeah, Rachel is, is the younger. And obviously she is, I guess, more attractive or something. But um, I guess that's one interesting way to say somebody doesn't look good is well, their eyes were well, weak. Well, we know later, in the, a little bit later in the story why her eyes were weak. Why? You know, let me spoil it. Yeah, what's the spoiler? Because she was just, she was always crying that she hoped that she'd become the wife of Esau. Oh, uh, she she thought she was gonna become the wife of Esau. Uh huh. And she was always crying, so her eyes were like that. It's, but it's it, it also says her eyes were weak, but Rachel was lovely of form and appearance. So I mean, that's that's saying that somebody isn't good looking and somebody is. And again, I'd like to remind everybody that beauty is skin deep and that um, you can take the most gorgeous of any being ever and their hearts are dark and evil and they will become the most ugly thing you've ever seen in your life because they're, they're evil. But isn't it also the eye of the beholder? It's the eye, it absolutely is the eye of the beholder. Absolutely is the eye of the beholder and, and um, for sure. Let's continue. Uh, 18. And Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, let me serve you seven years for Rachel your younger daughter. Okay, so essentially he uh, he sold his daughter. I mean, that's essentially what he did. He got a, he got free labor for seven years for one of his daughters. Well, that's an interesting deal, right? Okay, and Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Yeah, you think he really? It only seemed like seven. It's a few days. And it was like seven years is just a really long. Seven time. years is a really long time. Like it's a, it's a lifetime to to in some places. I mean, a lot of things happen in seven years. Okay, now we're heading back up to the top. And Laban said to Jacob, "Though thou art reputed, my brother, shouldest thou serve me for nothing? Tell me what shall be thy wages." And Laban had two daughters, the name of the elder Leah and the name of the younger Rachel, and the eyes of Leah were moist or dropping, running, from weeping and praying before Yahuwah that he would not 
destined her for Esau the wicked. And Rachel was beautiful in appearance and of fair countenance. Okay, is that, is this it? I mean, is she crying all the time so she's not beautiful? I mean, is this, is this what this is saying? I don't know. Is she upset? I mean, how can, how can that be? I mean, is, it, is that her whole life? She thought she was going to get stuck with Esau? I mean, they're twins. How different can they be, honestly? Well, I mean... They could be way different. Well, absolutely, yeah, way different. I mean, you're Mr. Square and your brother's Mr. Round. We do look similar, though. You, can, you do look very similar at like certain someone times. Someone that's never like, seen us, we absolutely. look similar. Like, absolutely. You guys, obviously, were different. Yes, yes. Um, that is true. All right, let's continue on. Where are we at, Eli? Uh, I think you're at the Jerusalem. Am I at the Jerusalem right here? Yeah. Okay. And the eyes of Leah were tender, for she had wept and prayed that she might not be brought under the, under, up in the And Rachel was beautiful in appearance and of fair countenance. Jacob loved Rachel, and he said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. And Laban said with deceit, It is better that I give her to thee than to another man abide with me. So this dude was already scamming this seven years prior to this. Dude, mm -hmm. gone for like, like two years, one year, dude. Well, he chose his wages. Hey, it, I, I would work seven years for your wife, for your mother. I would definitely do it. I would work for free for seven years to, to, to be with your mother. Okay, so here we go. Um, where are we? Uh, like Zacharias, he says, my wife has a beautiful face and heart. Yes. I married her for her heart, but her face was just a bonus. <laughs> Ab abso absolutely, absolutely. And, um, you know, there's I don't I don't see any ugly in anybody. I see, unless, of course, you're evil, and then you're, and you're Torah less, then there, there's an ugly there, but... If you're if you're with Yah, then it's it's all beauty. Okay. Uh -oh. Tess says it's choppy. Uh oh, it's choppy. All right, so maybe we'll uh, hang it here for a second. Let's let's see if it clears up a little bit, guys. Maybe it'll clear up. Let us know in this. Anyone else have anything on this particular part before we go on? Um, uh, not really. We were just uh, while you were out with the dogs, we were talking it's about. Like, like just a mad scammer. He just yeah. always got some evil. He's got. He's a. He's a long term scammer, right? Yeah, dude. He, a, if if the targums are true, then he killed his dad trying to kill Eliezer. Yeah, and so yeah, if the targums is true, um, he already killed his pops on this whole thing. All right, let's continue on, guys. Let us know if it clears up or if it's if it's unhearable. Then we'll probably have to wait on this. Okay. Uh, and Jacob. And Jacob said to Laban. Uh, no. Oh, okay, excuse me. And Jacob served for Rachel seven years, and they seemed in his eyes as a few days because he loved her. Okay, and 21. All right, 21. Now we're back to the bottom. And then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are completed, and let me go into her. And Laban gathered all the men of the place and made a feast. And it came to be in the evening that he took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. And Laban gave his female servant Zilpha to his daughter Leah as a female servant. All right, let's let's talk about this. Are we back to the targums? Let's talk about this, and then we'll discuss this whole scam yeah. thing that's going on. Okay. And Jacob said to Laban, "Give me my wife, for the days of my service are completed, and I will go in with her." And Laban gathered all the men of the place and made them a feast. Answering, he said to them, "Behold, seven years since Jacob came to us, the wells have not failed, and the watered places are multiplied. And now come." Let us counsel against him, cunningly, cu cunning counsel, that he may remain with us. And they gave him cunning counsel that he should take Leah to him instead of Rachel. And then the Jerusalem Post says this, or Jerusalem side. And Laban gathered all the people of the place and made a feast. And Laban answered and said to them, Behold, seven years are from the coming of this just man to us. Our waterings have not failed and our springs are many and now come. Give me counsel how we may settle or subject him among us yet seven years. And they gave him cunning counsel to take Leah to him instead of, of Rachel. Okay. And, uh, okay. It's back, still at the targums at the top. And it was in the evening that he brought Leah, his daughter, and introduced her to him. And he went in with her. And Laban gave, him, gave to him Zilpha, his daughter, whom his concubine had borne to him. And he delivered her to Leah, his daughter, to be her handmaid. Okay. This is some kind of, this is some sort of beyond a normal scam this is like a family scam. Like, it talks about how, you know, he spent seven years and it seemed like a few days. You don't spend seven years with somebody and love them that much and you're not, your guys' voices, there's absolutely zero way that this could have gone down without Rachel and Leah being in on this so as well as everyone else. Maybe the, the ceremonies they had, they don't speak or something or some amazing. Or maybe they had him so liquored up that he had no idea what was going on. Even then, even being liquored up, 
you're not going to be able to pass this off. It's not going to work out like this. So either it was a complete silent event or Leia was in on this, which she probably or, was. Yeah, she doesn't shoot nothing on it. Yeah, and probably but Rachel maybe, as well. Maybe she did the feast at all good. And then when he took her home, they swapped around and they were taking but her home. But here's the thing. You're not going to walk out of the place and not talk to your bride. You're not going to spend the entire night in silence, right? That doesn't happen. It just it, the first time that she says something and it's not the voice of the woman he, he thought to marry, even in darkness. Maybe, they're, maybe because they're, they're, they're sisters assume they're similar. I don't think so. Your guys' voice seem nothing alike. I, I just I don't buy this. And you can't if somebody else other than your mom who had your mother's voice started talking to me and it did not sound like things like we had talked about. I would know inside of a couple minutes there's something totally weird here. Like something has gone bizarre. The so, Targums tells you that Rachel gave stuff to Leia that he gave to her. Yeah, so it, gave to Rachel. Yeah, so I mean it, it was a it was a huge scam event. But I'm just curious at which point did Jacob figure this out? Because it seems like he would have figured this out inside of about five minutes and then he would have woken the next day and said, I don't know, maybe he didn't want to go crazy that night and go, Hey, what is going on here? Maybe he didn't want to um, mess with Leia or something or, or like break her heart. I mean, this was a horrible situation. Absolutely horrible it's always Laban it, it, and it's Laban and you know they're, they're, we're dealing with love and we're dealing with hearts we're dealing with affection we're dealing with um, you know these people fell in love and then their dreams in a certain sense got completely destroyed and even though he still married both of them I don't see that as that kind of marriage that is um, a wonderful one right because you know Leia you can see from all the stories they all had issues they, everybody had issues Leia didn't feel like she was loved it brought Huge division to the families. It bought. I mean, it just brought problems. I feel like that's kind of why there's, there's that command: don't marry your wife's sister. Yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Don't marry your wife's sister. And you know, that's why I think multiple marriages is for a thing back in the days. It's not something for today's stuff. We're not. We're not at the risk of the marauders coming and destroying our entire family and wiping out all civilization. All of this, right? It's it's a different times, and it is. It was meant for a different time. But let's continue on. All right, where are we at? Uh, you're down here, 25. All right, 25 in the the old Holy Scriptures. And in the morning, it came to be that C, it was Leah. So she said to Laban. So he said to Laban, what is this you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? So my guess is five minutes after the lights went out, or five minutes after they were in their little little role, she went and started talking to him, and th that this is how it's going to be, and he hadn't figured this all out, so he gets up in the morning and deals with his business. I would turn around and go on my back. Um, it would have been very weird, right? You just had this huge marriage marriage ceremony of all these people, and then all of a sudden you raise the roof. It would have been, it, this would have just been a, a terrible situation. Okay, 26. And Laban said, it is not done this way in our place to give the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one then we shall give you this one too for the service which you shall serve with me still another seven years. And hearts are broken, lives are broken, things have been changed, and... Um, we, have hey, issues, we have issues for the rest of the tribes of Israel's yeah. continuation because of this. Ab absolutely, yep. And there's always contentment with the, the sisters. Okay, and Jacob did so and completed her week. Then he gave him his daughter, Rachel, too, as wife. Okay. And Laban gave his female servant, Billa, to his daughter, Rachel, Rako as a female servant. Now, back to the Targums again. This is, a, this is like an uncomfortable story for sure. Yeah. And it was the time of the morning and he saw her. So it says in the morning he saw her, right? And, and behold, she was Leah, with, with whom all the night he had thought to be Rachel, because Rachel had delivered to her all the things with which Jacob had presented her. I don't buy this. Are you tied to tell me you guys, you guys didn't speak at all? That you never said a word. Hey, baby, how are you? Hey, how was that marriage ceremony? What did you think of uh, Crazy Uncle uh, Bill off or something? You know, something out there. Did nothing of that entire night's events warrant any sort of discussion at night? Maybe I don't understand the ceremony. Maybe. So let's continue on. Eli, where are we at? Uh, you are presented to her. Presented to her, right. right. But when he saw this, he said to Laban, What is this that thou hast done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served with thee? Why hast thou deceived me? And Laban said, it is, not done. it is not so done in our place to give the younger before the elder. Fulfill now the seven days of the feast of this, and I will give thee also that for the service which thou shalt serve with me seven other years. It, now, it, can it, you imagine how uncomfortable this would have been in this entire house? All of a sudden, the girl you thought was going to get married, it's a sister, 
And then all of a sudden you're with her for seven days and then you're going to marry uh, again, or basically essentially right there. It's just disappointment all around, right? Because Jacob, Jacob's not marrying who he wants to. Leia probably feels unloved. Just well, absolutely she feels unloved, right? She, she was not the choice and she was bamboozled. Laban bamboozled her to get labor out of... I don't know what happened to Rachel. She's probably just really mad about the whole thing. I don't know. Well, she if she had to be in on this, I mean, they had to sit her down and she had to come to grips with this before this ever went down. She what had to be part of the bamboozling of Jacob. It, it just has to be that way. Okay, where are we at, Elon? Uh, Jerusalem. All right, the Jerusalem says this. Fulfill the seven days of this feast and Leah and I will give. And Jacob did so, and fulfilled the seven days of the feast of Leah, and he gave him Rachel his daughter to wife, and Laban gave to Rachel his daughter Billah, whom his concubine bare him, and he delivered her unto be her handmaid. Okay, so that's the first time that we ever heard. Uh, second, because we heard up the other one as well. One more time. Uh, the second time, because we also heard on. Did we the, hear it? Uh, yeah. It oh, we didn't discuss it then. So we we did discuss this earlier, or like last week, we were talking about it. But um, Billah and um, what was the other? Zilpha were concubines' daughters of Laban. Yeah, and so they're all the same sisters. Yeah, they're all, all four of them. They're all four. So that is very that makes they this, the this it makes, it makes, it makes this completely whacked. Laban's weird, man. Yeah, Laban has really messed this entire thing up. And um, done him. Well, yeah, and, and I mean that that's very interesting that you know it it's all one big family technically. Okay. <laughs> the grand says this is why Jacob told Pharaoh his life was short and not good. <laughs> yeah. Thirty. Okay. Thirty at the uh, the bottom here. And he also went into Rachel, and he loved Rachel more than Leah, and he served with Laban still another seven years. And Yahuwah saw that Leah was unloved, and he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. And Leah conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Reuben. Reuben. For she said, For Yahuwah has looked on my affliction, because now my husband is going to love me. You know, these are a part of this um, horrible events and a horrible life you know I, I i wouldn't even know what it would be like to be unloved in a marriage or to not be wanted but just to be there and this is what this woman had to deal with and this is um you know she's just jacked up okay 32 and leah conceived and bore a son and she called his name reuben for she said for yahuwah has looked on my affliction because now my husband is going to love me Okay, um, did we just do that one twice? Eli, you're not yep. paying attention? I think no, we did that twice. 33 now. Eli gets a smack on the arm because he is looking over at the chat room instead of actually looking where he should. Okay, let's continue on here. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, Because Yahuwah has heard that I am unloved, he gave me this son too, and she called his name Shimon. Okay, there's a second unloved child. Okay, and so these kids are, you know, can you imagine the kids coming up in this kind of... Maybe loved either. Right, you don't have a dad who is a permanent dad in that same house that never leaves that house. Your dad goes to other houses with his other kids. It's just, it's odd. And it kind of ends up why Jake, uh, uh, Joseph ends up down the well. Well, that's why Reuben, um, Reuben ended up uh, defiling his uh, dad's bed because he was jealous of the entire thing, right? He was jealous of... It, of his his mother not having um, basically his dad went into a, a concubine. You with me? You looking confused? Yes, no, you guys with me? Okay. Thirty four. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, "Now this time my husband is joined to me because I have borne him three sons." So his name was called Lewi, Lewi, Levites. Okay. And she conceived again and bore a son and said, "Now I praise Yahuwah." So she called his name Yahuda. And she ceased burying. All right, where are we at, Navigator? Up top. Great, thank you. Grant says hi, Eli. Hi, Grant. <laughs> That's right. Hey, Joanna, too. Hi, yeah. Joanna. <laughs> okay, where are we at? Uh, you are... And. And, okay. See, the problem is, folks, my little Navigator, I only got one of them. He's sitting right next to me, and so he starts looking over at Mom's chat room with all of you guys in there, and he, he wants to see what you guys are saying. You, you were the one that didn't scroll after you on the bottom. Oh, this is Dad's fault? Yep. Oh, okay. All right, here we go. And he went in unto Rachel, and he loved Rachel more, also more than Leah, and he served with him with, and he served with him for her yet seven other years. And it was revealed before Yah Yahuwah that Leah was not loved in the sight of Jacob. And he said in his word that sons should be given her, and that Rachel should be barren. Okay, do you think Jacob loved her? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm sure he a little bit, but not probably not as much. I would say no. no I would say I no, right now, especially not maybe later. But right out of the gate, 
if you are going, I mean, if, if you have the love of your life set on one woman and you just labored seven years doing whatever it was. I would say he would have to grow on her, right? It, it would. Have to, it it would. Have to, like, be a time thing, right? Immediately, he's not going to love her. Like, the first few years, he's not going to love her. It's going to take a long time for them yep. to even... Be like, all right, yeah, I guess I love her too. But at the end, well, yeah. Spoiler alert: when everybody else dies off and there's nobody left, then Jacob loves her more than anyone else. So she gets some love at the end, but uh, she had a, a sad life. Okay, uh, are we thirty four? No, you already read down. Oh. Here. Okay, so here we are. Um, and Leah conceived and bare a son and called his name Reuben, for she said, "My affliction was manifest before Yahuwah. Therefore, now will my husband love me, for my affliction." hath been manifested before Yahuwah, as will be the affliction of my children before Yahuwah, when they shall be enslaved in the land of Mitzray. Okay? We've never heard of that before. We were discussing this because we didn't know if she was a prophetess or if this was, like, thrown in there later or that she would know anything of this sort. But it was new to us that she would know something of this sort. Okay? And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, Because it was heard before Yahuwah that I was hated, and he gave me this also. And so will be heard before him the voice of my children when they shall be enslaved in Mitzrayim. Okay, so I remember when Yahuwah was talking to Abraham, he's like, your, your generations will be enslaved 400 years. Yep. Maybe Abraham told Isaac that, and Isaac told them that, and then maybe Jacob told maybe. them that. And then like, then like my generation, because we're Abraham's generation, so now we'll, they'll be enslaved. That could be. That could be. That, that's interesting. All right. Um, where are we at? You like, and she, uh, did we do Shimon? Yeah. Uh, and she called his name Shimon, and she conceived again and bare a son and said, This time will my husband be united to me, because I have borne him three sons. And thus it will be that my children will be united to serve before Yahuwah. Therefore she called his name Le Levi. 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 And she conceived again and bare a son and said, This time will I give praise before Yahuwah, for from this my son kings shall come forth, and from him shall spring David's the king says David's the king. I don't know what that means. Who shall offer praise before Yahuwah. That one I don't know about. Therefore she called his name Jehuda, and she ceased to bear. All right. I think that is it. Yeah, um, we got it. Everyone resting. What's that? Um, yeah, so let's let's talk about this. Do we have anything else? Do we have the any? Grand just says Leia got props at the end because she gets buried with the patriarchs. Yeah. Yep. She's the only one. Yeah, she. That's, that is true. All right. Um, well, I guess that is it for everyone out there in the chat room. I hope you guys are well, and I hope you guys this did something for somebody. And um, Eli, what are we gonna do for the exit song? By the way, that's a good question. Do we, do we have something? We're we gonna rend the, no, the heavens again. You can, or you can just choose some random one. Some random one. All right, everybody. Well, I guess that's it. Um, if you guys don't have anything out there, we're gonna read the uh, ironic blessing. And um, let's go ahead and read the ironic blessing, then we will close. And we just know that we love you guys very, very much. And we hope you guys have a wonderful day. We hope you guys are keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of our Creator. There's no better way forward. There is no better life than that. And for everybody who's, who's listening to this and listens to this in the future, this is our, our message, is that we hope that you guys will seek our Creator where He is able to be found. He's not able to be found in these 501c3 churches. He's not able to be found anywhere. Our creator lives and he will live with you and he will abide with us and he will send his son to reign. We will have a chance in a kingdom to come. We will have another place. The life that we're living right here is all temporary. Everything we're doing is all temporary. This is a resume right now for the kingdom to come. If what we are doing right now is pleasing to our creator, then we have hope. But if what we are doing right now is we're just waiting to get to the end and we're going to change our ways right before we die, then that's a life of no hope. And so a life of hope is walking with our creator. All right, Jade, let's go ahead and, and shut this down. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto El Aaron and unto his sons, saying, On this why you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, Yahuwah bless you and guard you. Yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Beautiful. Okay. All right, everyone. We love you guys. Let's do this. Let's rend the heavens.
All right, much love, everybody. We love you guys dearly. Hope you have a good day. May Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May his light forever shine upon you. May he forever find your way, his ways in the Torah. Much love to you guys. We're out. Shabbat shalom.